Another thing I thought it would be good to look at is uh, three quarter size, full size, over full size, seven eighths. Uh, what are all these different sizes? Uh, a base, double base size is a really interesting thing because we do all use the term three quarter or four quarter or seven eighths. Um, you find people with described instruments as seven eighths a lot more in the, the States than, um, than here. But um, yeah, what makes a base big or small? Uh, there isn't actually a defined um, measurement that would give you a three-quarter size or a four-quarter size base. So what, you know, there's a certain measurement that would make you think, oh, that is definitely, you know, that fits into this measurement, so that's a three-quarter, or that fits into this measurement, so that's a four-quarter. Um, so I would think of it more that there's big bases and smaller bases. There's also more playable ones and less playable ones. It is very possible to have a small base or a three-quarter size base that is way harder to play than a full size or four-quarter size base. Um, and it's down to several different factors. Um, so I thought we'll just look at some different instruments and I'll just give you my thoughts on, um, you know, kind of what their attributes that make them playable are and, um, you know, whether they'd be a three-quarter size or four-quarter size. It's like cars, I think, in some ways. You know, there's, uh, you know, it's either a big car or a small car. There isn't a sort of uh, a defined sort of size. It's just what you look at and what it's like inside, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, would make you say that one is big and one is small. Um, and as I say, they could, one could be really bad to drive, even though it's small, or one could be really nice and easy to drive and feel small, even though it's big. So it's a similar sort of idea. This is a Hawks concert bass, uh, which is almost exactly a copy of Panormo. So Panormo is a classic English bass. Um, you find it's very popular sort of model and, and you know, the, the, the actual real ones themselves, very rare, um, you know, are extremely desirable. Um, but Hawks copied those bases in large numbers and did different models, but they, they basically did, they used the same outline, the same sound, the same everything, but the one thing they did change was flat back, round back, liners, etc., etc. So they had different, different grades of, of model. Um, so I would describe this, this is a full size base. So if you get a double base cover, uh, this will fit into a full size case. Um, what it does have is it's quite big at the shoulders here. Now people that play these bases or play old English bases, you know, they, they expect it, they don't mind it, it's you know, perfectly normal. Um, so it's, it's not that this is an unplayable bass at all, but this is quite a big bass and it's got quite a big shoulder, just like classic English basses. So actually, to get round it, um, you know, the, the bigger the shoulder, the, 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 fir the faster I'm sort of finding it harder to get up into um, the thumb position and the upper register. So if you were sort of really small, you might find that this might be a bit more tricky to play than something that had a bit of a more of a sloping shoulder uh, here. Things have improved a lot by the overstand increasing and bridge heights and, and just sort of, you know, making this where it, the, the sort of angle over the front and all of that a lot more comfortable to play. Um, so th that has improved dramatically over the years. So even slightly larger instruments uh, are still very comfortable to play. Um, but what, what really makes the difference is the distance from here to here. So here you can see it's, I can sort of easily reach that distance because that is, that's the D there. And that there is the point at which I'm having to start to go into over, get round the base to start to play it. Um, so this has got quite a you know biggest shoulder. So I would say that this is a you know this is a fairly normal full full size base, um, but you could have one that was almost identical. Reduce this top part a little bit, and actually you'd end up with a base that was just as big, but just a little bit more playable. And we'll have a look at that now. Um, so I'm just going to change to our Martin 4-4. Right, this is, the, this is our Martin 4-4 bass. So, obviously forget the sound holes, uh, but you'll look at the shape of it and it's actually pretty similar to that Hawks we were looking at before. Um, so, in fact, if you got a template and you um, took from maybe here down, around the edge, it's actually almost identical in shape, completely identical to what we were just looking at. 
But what Tom did, because obviously Tom is a, a player, he took, in fact, that exact, that Hawks model, um, and he thought, oh, the Hawks are the Panormo model, and he was like, well, for, from a player's point of view, I just wish this was a little bit more manageable, uh, and what could I do to do that? So what Tom did was he reduced the measurement here from the body stop slightly, a little bit, and he just brought all of this in just a little bit. So you can see that the, the top part of this base is, is a very similar in style, but it's just the whole thing is brought in slightly. And it's only little tiny bits. I'm talking like maybe a centimetre or so, centimetre or two off the body stop. And this whole thing's just come in, you know, maybe like a couple of centimetres, that's all. It's a tiny, tiny difference. And this is still a full-size base. We call it our 4.4. Some people might say it was a 7 8 but people would only say it's a 7 8 mostly because it's so comfortable to play here. And you'll notice, look, all of a sudden, the distance from here, I can't even reach it. It's changed so much. Uh, and that's just by reducing this part. This has come from here down to there, and suddenly it's, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm already in the upper register and I haven't even moved. So you can see the difference. Um, it doesn't mean to say that uh, a base like a Hawks or something like that is, is bad or it's wrong or it's just, it is what it is. And actually they're super desirable bases. People love them. Um, and you know, people that love old English bases, uh, players are very happy to play those models. But what you'll find now is it's very rare that people directly copy these old bases. Most people make a few little tweaks or make a, make a model that's got slightly, that is slightly, uh, you know, changed around a bit for the reason that modern bases tend now to be more playable. Or they're just, they're almost designed. I think when bases were made a long time ago, they were kind of people sort of kept, kept copying things and maybe making some small changes. But I don't think they were really designed with the player in mind first. It was more someone made the base how they made it, and the player learnt to play the base basically. Whereas now, it's kind of the other way around. So the instruments are designed for the players to play. So, you know, that shoulder can get in the way, right, let's reduce it. The, the body stops too long, so the string length's too long. Okay, let's reduce it. Uh, you know, it's quite big at the top. Okay, let's put a break in. So people now, when they design instruments, do tend to really make them more playable, which is um, you know, well, I think there's been a real resurgence in, in people buying uh, new instruments because the playability of them um, is, is really, really good. Um, and as I said, there's nothing to say, you know, Tom's, Tom's not, not the tallest of guys at all. Uh, but he, you know, he's played lots of big bases in his life and, you know, he's a great player. So absolutely no problem. It's the same thing. So some people, uh, yes, they might find this more playable, but actually prefer the sound or the pedigree or something of the larger bass. So for them, it's no problem. Uh, but, but what I'm really trying to get across here is that both of these bases are full-size bases. However, they will give you a very different playing experience. Uh, uh, you know, for the reason that this, this top, this, the measurement from here to here is different. The slight top shape is different. Uh, it's also very important to remember that when you're playing the bass, uh, that everything that is below the bridge, you're not playing it. So when I'm playing, I, I'm going to be playing from. I'm going to be playing this part here. I'm going to be playing the string length. So actually, if the bass, if the bottom bout was suddenly an extra five centimeters wide and an extra bit deep, because of how I'm stood here, I'm not playing that bit. That's got like I, I'm never going to make contact with the with the bottom of the bass. You might make contact with this part here with your knee, or you know, depending on how how you play or you sat down, etc. But this part here could do whatever it wants, the, the bottom part of the bass, um, because you're just not gonna notice it. You might notice it carrying around or trying to find a cover for it, but um, it's, it's, it doesn't come into play. So actually, you can have a bass that is very long from here to there, which would then make the whole thing bigger, but actually, you don't notice that. The only thing you'll pick up is maybe extra sound. Um, our Concept 4.4 model that we make actually is very long from here to there, which obviously makes it where the bass naturally just sits up here a bit more. But this part is actually very short. So even though it's a, quite a big bass and a full, proper full size bass, you can actually be really small and find it super comfortable to play because the, the shoulder is right, uh, this part here is right, but down there is a bit bigger, but you don't notice as a player. Um, so it's, this again is quite, quite an important thing. So that would, I would say that 
probably the Concert 4-4 is a bigger bass than our Martin 4-4, yet it's probably, the shoulder is more sloping, it's probably even more comfortable to play. So again, you've got a bigger bass, we've gone even a bit bigger, there's more length, longer body, you know, it's quite a large instrument, but actually the playing experience that it provides you is a really enjoyable one. So again, and you could have a three quarter size bass with a big sort of shoulder, and actually that full size concert will actually be a lot more comfortable to play than the three quarter size bass that hasn't got such a, a, a sort of understanding and comfortable shoulder. So I'll have a look at a, a couple of other instruments as well. Right, so this is our concert three quarter. So again, as far as three quarters go, I'd actually say this, is, this looks like a pretty small one, uh, and it's not big, but it's got a very sloping shoulder. So um, the, again, the length from here to here, the body stop uh, is, is shorter again than the full size uh, equivalent. Um, but due to this sloping shoulder, again, if you think that measurement from the D here to where I'm gonna to start to get over the bass, it's very long. So again, I'm in thumb position already here. So I've, 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 I've not had to go anywhere to do that. Um, this bass is quite small. Um, you know, it's not a big three quarter. I would say probably our Martin three quarter, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Again, looks like a bigger bass and probably is a bit of a bigger playing experience for you. Um, but you can really see the difference um, that the shape of this one is obviously more slender. But if you imagine, we had exactly the same bass as this one, uh, three quarter size, everything is, you know, is not so big. Imagine this, this went, went like that. So actually suddenly the shape of the, bo the body is up here, that's gonna change everything. However, you still could say it was a three quarter size bass. So in some ways, if you've got, you know, you can find some of those sort of um, 18, late, late 1800s German basses, where they've got quite a big shoulder here, you see those are actually three quarter size, technically, people say they're three quarter size German factory instrument. Actually the playing experience of that is, is not gonna be as good, anywhere near as good as say the three quarter size of this, or the full size bass that we would make, or, or one that had a smaller, smaller top. So the three quarter size and four quarter size, or full size, um, isn't, isn't always a teller exactly of what you think you're gonna get. So you could, you could very easily end up buying or, or looking at or trying a three quarter size base, but unless this measurement here, that measurement there, this shoulder here and the distance from there and the, the, the way it's been designed around the player is right, actually you could end up having a much worse playing experience on, a, on like say an old, old three quarter size uh, then you could do a new full size, or, or, or you know, an old, old full size bass that's got a, a sloping shoulder. So it isn't always uh, quite as it seems with the three quarter size full size. It's more: is that bass comfortable? Is that bass playable? Uh, it's also a very personal thing. So you get some people that are very small that ha happily play a great big bass. You get some guys that are really big and very tall but really like playing a, a three quarter size bass. Uh, so there isn't really any real set rules to it at all. Um, it's, you know, it, it is kind of, it is what works for you. Uh, and I would always say actually, in some ways, if you um, are smaller or you, you know, you, you, you are going to not play a bigger bass as well as you are a smaller one, then you go for the smaller one. Even if the sound isn't quite as big, if you play it better and you're able to get more out of it, you're actually gonna be further ahead than if you think, you know, I need to get a really big bass so I can get as much sound as possible. Actually, that could often be the wrong thing to do if it's gonna be at the expense of your ability to play it, uh, if, if that makes sense. So I think we'll have a little bit of a look at a really big bass. So this is a proper bass. Um, you can see it's mahusive. Um, and the funny thing is, this would actually have been reduced already from what it was. I would say probably it may well have been reduced by the Dodd workshop. You can see the, the corners. Years like, you know, this would have been a couple hundred years ago. Um, anyway, you can see this is a, a whopper. So this uh, would make a really nice five string bass. And, you know, some people, especially when they get big like this, uh, that is something we were thinking about doing with it at some point. Um, the body stop of this bass is very long. 
so it's actually got quite a long string length. We've tried to sort of bring the neck down a little bit, but again, you've got the distance from there to there is almost nothing. So to, I'm already having to start to get working to get into thumb position here, even though we've done a nice neck on it and stuff like that. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a whopper. So this, you could still say, was a full-size bass. So, um, you know, again, there's a very big difference between this full-size bass and, say, another full-size bass. Um, so we'll have a bit of a, one more look at a, um, another, another, another um, full-size bass that, again, is a slightly different shape. Uh, right, so this is also what you would class as a full-size bass. So size-wise, it's actually quite a long instrument, um, but it's, it is a, it is a full-size bass, or what we would say is a full-size bass, but it has got super sloping shoulders. The distance from here to here is enormous, so all the notes are effectively are further back, which makes it more comfortable. The body stop actually is not too long. So you could really think in some ways, I mean, I think the Northern English makers did, this is obviously a, a, a Northern English bass, um, I think the models they made, they did kind of make them a bit more for the player. Uh, they, you t they tend to be a more, um, you know, slightly more sloping shouldered instrument. Um, you know, William Tarr made many lovely sort of playable basses that do tend to be very big at the bottom. So again, in some ways, they kind of worked out, well, we can have extra space down there, we can make that big, um, but as long as we make this smaller and this comfortable to play, you can actually have a whopper a really big bass, as long as this is not too long, this is not too, uh, too square, then actually it's gonna be really easy to play the bass. Um, so yeah, again, that's another example of a full-size bass, an old full-size bass that really is super playable. Um, and we're gonna look at one more that is uh, big, uh, and I'll explain why it would still, even though it's big, it's still gonna be very desirable. So this is a nice northern Italian bass. Um, now, actually, the length of the body about of this bass isn't that long. Um, it's just it has very big shoulders. Um, so it's comfortable to play still. It's because it's quite narrow. The neck set's good. Uh, bridge height's fine. So it's quite a narrow bass, as you can see, which obviously helps. Um, now, it's probably unlikely that someone that was really small would want to buy this bass. Um, because it is quite a big instrument to play. It's quite, you know, it's, it's got quite a big shoulder. However, the sound is phenomenal. So even, even though there may be a more playable bass on the market, or one that you would say is, is more playable, uh, players are still gonna want to go for instruments like this. Um, you know, because it's, it's a lovely old bass, it's got history, um, you know, it's, a, you know it's, a, it's an investment, etc. But also the sound is amazing. So you can get, um, you know, the, the size of the instrument, especially if you're a pro professional player, um, isn't a barrier. So someone, would, someone wouldn't come and not want this bass because it was way too big. Um, you know, the sort of person that would want this bass would be very well able to manage and deal with the fact it's quite square here. Um, so it's not a question that, um, a bass like this is less desirable, it's just that it has to be for a certain type of player and some people will come and play this like nothing. Uh, other people might say, oh, look, this is not helping me, it's, it's too big. Again, you can see the distance from here to here is, is, is small. So, you know, it, it's a great bass, great, great, uh, great, great instrument for a certain type of player. Uh, but again, this would be classed as a full-size bass. However, the playing experience would be very different to say the coal uh, that we looked at before, again, it's still a full-size bass, but the way the shoulder is, the way it's been designed, uh, makes for a, a more playable experience. So, yeah, I think, I guess what I'm trying to get across is take each bass, I suppose, as an individual, because you may well be surprised uh, that what you think, oh, this is a three-quarter, so it's gonna be easy to play, may actually not be the case. You may actually find that the, a certain type of three-quarter size bass is really uncomfortable to play. Uh, but actually then a certain type of full-size bass actually would suit you better, even though you think or your teacher said, oh, I need to go and get a three-quarter size bass. Um, you've got to think what type of three-quarter size bass. And in some ways you can get a full-size bass or a big bass that will play much more easily 
than you would a three quarter size base. So take each base as an individual. Um, you know, the main thing to do is it's what works for you. It's very, it's a very personal thing, as I say. You know, we have people uh, come that are very small, want a big, want a great big base, or you get people that are very big that want a small base. So it really, there really isn't any rules. It, the main thing is just not to feel like you're confined by looking for one or the other. Go and see which one works for you.